hey guys welcome back to my channel today i thought i will discuss a case based question because case based questions are asked these days throughout our medical career as well as case based questions are also asked during our neat pg entrance examination they might be also asked for your next pg entrance examination so one advantage of case based question is that it tests our integrative knowledge regarding the subject and the case which i have chosen today it tests our knowledge of anatomy physiology as well as medicine so without wasting much time let's just see that short case which i have chosen today okay the case goes something like this a blacksmith came with a history of burn in his right hand on examination so concentrate on this part these parts will be very important so when i examine the patient there is loss of pain there is loss of temperature where is the loss of pain and temperature it is over the thorax as well as both the upper limbs both the upper limbs means loss of pain and temperature is bilateral but there is no loss of fine touch no loss of vibration sense and no loss of joint position and one more very important history which we have here is that there is no motor loss so after all these things the question is asking us what is the probable diagnosis the options given are tapes dorsalis syringomyelia subacute combined degeneration subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis okay out of these four options right now i can rule out one option what is that option that option is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis now why do you think i can rule out amyotrophic lateral sclerosis for the people who don't know what is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis amyotrophic lateral scler sclerosis is a type of motor neuron disease okay motor neuron disease so what is the meaning of this motor neuron disease motor neuron disease means it's a disease or we can say it's a degenerative disease which is affecting only the motor neurons in the spinal cord okay affecting the motor neurons in the spinal cord so if there is any disease which is affecting only the motor neurons of the spinal cord there should be motor loss but in this case scenario the case says that there is no motor loss hence i can easily rule out amyotrophic lateral sclerosis so it is out of the question now there are only three things remaining one is called as tapes dorsalis another one is called as syringomyelia and the third one is called as subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord so in order to understand these diseases and uh, where is the site of lesion of these diseases first let's start with the anatomy okay so first let's start so what what does he say in the case is that there is loss of pain and temperature so we must know that the sensation of pain and temperature is carried by a tract which is called as lateral spinothalamic tract and in the spinothalamic tract there are two tracts one is a lateral spinothalamic tract another one is an anterior spinothalamic tract and the anterior spinothalamic tract carries the sensation of crude touch and pressure okay so in order to understand the disorders and where is the lesion for those disorders we should also understand the course of these tracts okay so the lateral spinothalamic tract begins from the level of the receptor okay the fibers which are carrying the sensation of the pain and temperature they enter into the they enter via the dorsal root of the spinal cord and they enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord in an area which is called as substantia gelatinosa okay these are called as the first order neurons the second order neurons begin in the substantia gelatinosa and very important point is that they are crossing over to the opposite side they are crossing over to the opposite side once they cross over to the opposite side they come and lie in the lateral white funiculus and from the lateral white funiculus the second order neurons are ascending upwards and they ascend upwards uh, in the brain stem and they ultimately go to the thalamus okay ultimately go to the thalamus which nucleus of the thalamus it's the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus the third order neurons from the thalamus are arising 
and they are ultimately relaying in the somatosensory cortex. This is the course of the lateral spinothalamic tract. Now, let's see one more important tract which is called as the dorsal column. One very important difference between the dorsal column and the lateral spinothalamic tract. See, this is the spinothalamic tract and this is our dorsal column. Okay. So, one very important difference is that the spinothalamic tract fibers, they are crossing over in the center of the spinal cord to the opposite side. So, that means the fibers are crossing over at the level of the spinal cord itself. But let's see what is the course of the dorsal column. Again, dorsal column is beginning from the receptor, entering into the dorsal nerve root of the spinal cord. Then it enters into the dorsal uh, gray horn of the spinal cord and then the fibers are descending upwards. So, that means these are the first order neurons and there is no synapse occurring at the level of the spinal cord and no crossing over of the fibers also at the level of the spinal cord. Then these fibers are ascending upwards and then they are going to relay in the dorsal column nuclei. There are two nuclei, I will come to that later and this relaying is taking place at the level of the medulla. Now, the second order neurons from the medulla, these are the ones which are crossing over to the opposite side. So, the crossing over of the fibers of the dorsal column is not taking place at the level of the spinal cord, but it is taking place at the level of the medulla. And once the fibers cross over, here you can see that the second order neuron fibers, they are ascending up in the pons and then they ascend up in the midbrain and they form the fibers of the medial laminiscus and then they ultimately synapse at the level of the thalamus. Again, the same nucleus, the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. Okay. So, from here, the third order neurons are arising and then they are terminating in the somatosensory cortex. So, here we have to understand the basic difference between the dorsal column and the spinothalamic tract is that the spinothalamic tract is crossing over at the level of the spinal cord but the dorsal column is not crossing over at the level of the spinal cord. So, the crossing over of the fibers, the spinothalamic fibers is occurring from the center, in the center of the spinal cord. Okay. We already know what are all the sensations which are carried by the lateral spinothalamic tract. That is, it is carrying the sensation of pain and temperature from the opposite side of the body. Whereas, do we know what are all the sensations which are carried by the dorsal column? The dorsal column carries all these sensations. So, the dorsal column carries the sensation of vibration. It carries the sensation of tactile localization, tactile discrimination, joint position, stereognosis and fine touch. Okay. And in order to understand uh, these different diseases and which and these different diseases are going to affect the different parts of the spinal cord. So, it's very important for us to understand the position of the tracts in the spinal cord. And three very important tracts, the spinothalamic tract, the corticospinal tract and the dorsal column. Okay. Here we are saying this is where the lateral corticospinal tract is situated. So, where is the position of the lateral corticospinal tract? Lateral corticospinal tract is situated in the lateral white funiculus okay lateral white funiculus so what is the meaning of lateral white funiculus the lateral part of the white matter and this is what is called as our dorsal column this is what is called as our dorsal column and the dorsal column is situated in the posterior white funiculus and it is divided into two parts one is called as a gracile funiculus and another one is called as the cuneate funiculus Remember, the gracile funiculus is always situated medially and the cuneate funiculus is the one which is situated laterally. The gracile funiculus is the one which is conveying the sensations from the sacral and lumbar parts of the body, whereas the cuneate fasciculus is the one which is conveying the sensation from the thoracic and the cervical part of the body. Last but not the least is the spinothalamic tract. So, spinothalamic tracts are present in the lateral as well as anterior white funiculus of the spinal cord but very important thing to remember here is that these are nothing but these are the crossed fibers and the crossing of the fibers is taking place over the central part of the spinal cord. So, now let us see 
the different diseases and those three diseases which were given us in the options and what part of the spinal cord is it that they are affecting. So the first disorder was tapes dorsalis. Tapes dorsalis is nothing but it's a, a manifestation of neurosyphilis. We all know what is syphilis. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease. It's a bacterial infection. And then in the later stages of the syphilis, the syphilis is going to affect the nerves. And the all the features which are affecting because of the neurosyphilis that is called as tapes dorsalis. And tapes dorsalis, very important point, is going to affect only the dorsal columns. Only this part of the spinal cord is going to be affected. So if dorsal column is affected, what all are lost? All the sensations which are carried by the dorsal column will be lost. And what are those sensations? Most importantly, there is a loss of position. Then there is a loss of vibration sense below the level of the leash. Okay. And even with the eyes closed, the, the patient is falling. And that is called as a rhombic sign. Okay. So tapes dorsalis is basically affecting which part? Tape dorsalis is basically affecting the dorsal column of the spinal cord. So when it affects the dorsal column of the spinal cord, all those sensations like your fine touch, your vibration sensation, your joint position, uh, your stereognosis, okay, all these things are going to be affected. But it does not affect the lateral uh, spinothalamic tract or it won't affect the corticospinal tract so those are spared but what was given in the question the fine touch the vibration sense and the joint position were normal so that means the disease which we are which we are we have to find out what is the disease it's not the tapes dorsalis okay next let's go to the second disorder which is called as subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord the subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord is the one which is occurring because of vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay. And it's a neuropathy wherein there is degeneration of the posterior columns. Here you can see in the diagram the part of the spinal cord affected is again the posterior column and also the corticospinal tract. They are going to undergo degeneration and ultimately there is atrophy of these neurons. So again, if the posterior column is affected, there should be loss of vibration sense, there should be loss of joint position and there should be also loss of fine touch. But in our patient, all these things are intact. That means there is only loss of pain and temperature. So that means even here, we can rule out the subacute combined degeneration and here even the corticospinal tracts are involved. So even there is involvement of the motor system. And the person is going to have upper motor neuron like paralysis, like your spastic paralysis, hyper -ex excitable tendon reflexes, Babinski sign positive, but none of that is there in our patient. So we have ruled out tapes dorsalis. We have also ruled out the subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. We have already ruled out amyotrophic lateral sclerosis just by looking at the clinical history. So only one thing is left out and which is that thing that is called as syringomyelia. So what is the meaning of syringomyelia? Syringomyelia is a disease which is characterized by cavity formation. Okay, cavity formation where cavity formation is there in the spinal cord. And which part of the spinal cord does it affect? It affects the central part of the spinal cord. And it is more commonly seen in the cervical segments as well as the thoracic segment. So if this is the spinal cord, here you are seeing only the central part of the spinal cord is affected. So if the central part of the spinal cord is affected, which fibers might be affected? As I have told you, the spinothalamic fibers, they enter into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord. The first order neurons end there and the second order neurons are going to cross over to the opposite side. Same thing is also happening from this side. Again the second order neurons they are crossing over to the opposite side. So this is the area where 
crossing over of the lateral spinothalamic tract is taking place and if there is a lesion in the central part of the spinal cord these fibers are the one which will be affected first so if the spinothalamic tract is affected then there is loss of pain and temperature okay so there is loss of pain and temperature with pairing of all the other sensations which are carried by the dorsal column okay this is called as dissociative anesthesia only one or two types of sensation is lost remaining all sensations are present and as i have told you that this is more commonly seen in the cervical and thoracic part so usually the upper limb and the thorax are the one which are most commonly involved and there is no motor involvement okay so now we can easily come to the diagnosis a blacksmith came with a history of burn in his right hand on examination there is loss of pain and temperature so if there is loss of pain and temperature over thorax and both the upper limb so that means bilateral fibers are involved okay and then there is no loss of fine touch there is no loss of vibration sense there is no loss of joint position that means the dorsal column is very much intact there is no motor loss that means there is nothing happening with the cortico spinal tract so what is your probable diagnosis we have already ruled out amyotrophic lateral sclerosis tapes dorsalis is going to affect the dorsal column that is also ruled out subacute combined degeneration also affects the dorsal column and the corticospinal tract that is also ruled out so only one thing is left out and that is called as pyrimomyelia so with the help of the knowledge which we have gained in the anatomy and physiology and also in the medicine we could very easily solve such kind of questions okay so thanks for watching this video for more such videos you can you can just leave a comment like on what topics you want me to make the video upon so as per the demand i am going to make the video okay so kindly like share and subscribe this video if you have liked this video and stay updated for more such interesting videos and concept clearing videos thank you